guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Taryn and it's lovely to have you joining us. And for everyone that's not new, welcome back, I have missed you. Um, I know it's been a while since I've uploaded, but I promise I'm back. <laughs> Love you guys. Anywho, today's video, as you can tell from my title, is looking at a really simple and easy way to study the Bible because, hi Jasper, it can seem really daunting sometimes when the words Bible study come up and you're kind of like, well, what does that look like, you know? Um, so this is a really simple method used by a lot of people that I was <laughs> introduced to when I was still in high school and I hope that it helps you and yeah, so let's get into it. So, step one is to grab out your Bible. This is one that I like to use. Um, but obviously you can use your phone and use the Uversion app or whichever Bible you have available to you. Um, if you want to see more about the Uversion app, go check out this link over here where I spoke to you about <coughs> where I spoke to you about how your phone can bring you closer to God. And I chat about the Uversion app in there, so if you want to find out more, go take a look at that. But if you have a physical Bible, great, let's grab that one out. So before we start reading the Bible at any point, the best step is always to start with prayer. So we just say, you know, Lord, help me to see, help me hear your voice in this. Help me to, to grow closer to you in reading the Bible. Lord, I want to know you better. Help me to read your scriptures, to understand you, Lord, in your name, amen. Just something really simple like that, you know, is just always the best way to start reading your Bible, you know, because there is so much depth and there is so much wisdom and beauty in this book, or these books, I should say. But it's with God's help and with his assistance that we can truly understand it, that it impacts our hearts. So yes, always start with prayer. And then we get into our lovely soap devotional. So what is soap? Soap is a very simple devotional method that is used by a lot of people. I first heard about it when I was in high school and have been using it on and off ever since. Um, I'm currently going through a series on Esther with my life group girls going through the soap devotional on each chapter. I'm going to chuck out some videos for you guys so you can see the soap method in action. But for today, we're just discussing the theory. So, after all that, what is soap? Soap is an acronym. I was going to say anagram. That's so not right. Hope my grade three and four English teachers are proud of me. Um, so, soap is an acronym. S-O-A-P. I feel like I did not do that right. SOAP is an acronym. <laughs> so SOAP is an acronym. It stands for Scripture, Observation, Prayer... No, I can spell. Scripture, Observation, Analysis, and Prayer. So these are just four simple steps that you want to go through while reading your Bible. Hey, it's Future Taryn. So basically I was re-watching this and I was editing this and realized that I really stuffed up. So soap is not scripture observation soap is not scripture observation analysis prayer, but it's scripture observation and application and then prayer. So I don't know, I guess I turned back into an English student or something and was just like, how is this a you know, what is the analysis of this? I don't really know. But in any case, I screwed up. I'm fixing it now. So, yes, you'll be interrupted by me a little bit in the video as I fix myself. So, step one is scripture. So, you pick up this beautiful book or your phone, whatever you're doing. You open it to wherever you want to go and you read the Bible. That is scripture. So, sometimes people can do this with just a verse. I like to do it with a full chapter because you get a bit more context to what's going on. And it's always important to keep in mind the context of our Bible verses. So yes, yeah, scripture, you might pick a chapter of book. For example, as I said, I'm doing Esther. So read chapter one of Esther. And sometimes you can just read it by yourself. You can read it aloud. You can read it in a group. Or a lot of people find it really helpful to write it out. So if this is a shorter segment of scripture, obviously it takes up less space. But if it's longer, it can still be really beneficial to sit and pause and write it out. Say so you're just skimming over the scriptures and actually reading it and learning from it. So once we've read or wrote, written words, once we've done S of soap, we move on to O. 
So O stands for observation, and this is basically just what is going on in this verse, in this chapter, in this scripture. So, sticking again with the book of Esther, you know, who is involved in this? Where is this? There are always some good base questions to ask that just help you get that little level of understanding. And if you don't know, maybe that's a sign that you should read the surrounding chapters, or you should, you know, go back and read from the whole book rather than just a verse or a chapter. But when you're reading, you've got to pause and you've got to say, all right, where is this taking place? What's going on? Who's here? You know, who are the characters in this story? Not characters to say fictional characters, but characters to just say who are the main people that we're seeing. Um, so O is basically just what's going on. Let's look at these key criteria, you know, who, what, when, where, how, the basic stuff they teach you in English, and you just say, what am I seeing? So that's O. Next we go on to A, which stands for analysis. So as I mentioned, A is actually for application, and basically what this just means is how does this apply to our lives, you know? Like, obviously the Bible was written a really long time ago, and it can be a bit tricky to see how all these kind of ancient things relate to us today in our modern world, you know? It's not like they had phones and social media and all that stuff. So what is it that we can take out of the scriptures, out of the Bible, that we can actually apply to our lives? Because the Bible is full of God's word to us, it is full of his wisdom, and we want to see... You good cat? <laughs> and we want to see what we can do and how we can understand him better so that we can live our lives more like Christ. So let's say you're looking at Jonah and the whale, um, or Jonah and the big fish. So in this story, um, it's kind of a classic one, God says, go to Nineveh, and Jonah's like, nah, they're, they're crazy over there. So he tries to run away, and he ends up getting swallowed by fish, and then spat out, and he goes and does what God told him to. So from that, we're kind of like, well, I'm not Jasper, ow, ow. So I'm not being chased by a fish, so how does this relate to me? Well, you look at the principles behind the things, so... What, do we learn, what can we learn from Jonah that applies to our life? Well, Jonah didn't follow what God asked him to do. He didn't trust in the Lord's um, blessing and he didn't trust that the Lord would be with him. Whereas in our lives, we can learn from Jonah's experience. We can go, okay, first time, God, I know you're going to be with me. God, I know I can trust you. So let's go. So that's just one example of the A for application. Now we are on to the final step, which is prayer. Now I know we started with prayer, but obviously prayer is wonderful. It's how we talk to God, and we always want to be sure that we are speaking to Him and praying to Him when we finish reading the Word and when we close our Bible. So often that prayer can just be, you know, like God seal in me what I've written, help me to apply this to my life, things like that. Amen. <laughs> Things like that are wonderful prayers to end with. Um, when I do it with my life group, we go around the circle and we pray not only for what we've read, but that it applies to our lives, that we can learn to be like Esther or like whichever character you know we're reading from, uh, which book <laughs> we're reading from. And then we pray that as we go out our weeks, that God helps us to remember how they lived and how we can live for God. That, my friends, is soap. S-O-A-P. I hope you don't forget it. I hope that you use it in your daily Bible reading. Uh, always encouraging. Um, I love you all so much. I've missed seeing you. I've missed filming for you. But that there is something that I really felt in my heart from God to put out for you guys. I hope you give it a try. If you do, put a comment down below so that we can chat or, you know, shoot me a comment or a message on Instagram at Cultivating My Vibe. Hope you'll follow. If you don't, go check that one out. I post Christian content. And yeah, I love you guys. Have fun using this. If you have any questions, let me know down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And I'm going to chuck out a Bible study series so that we can go through the book of Esther together. So that's going to be really awesome. I'm really, really keen. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoy and have fun getting into the word. I love you all and you have a lovely week. God bless. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. No, no, that's not bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye-bye.